black people are the most racist people you've ever seen in all your days. If you know a black person, he or she is a hardcore racist. Not a little bit of racist, not a partial racist, sometime part-time. If you know a black person, they are racist. And by racist, I mean they are filled with hatred for God, hatred for the fidelity of his word, and they have no production in humanity. Black people are the most racist people on the entire earth. Nearly 96% of black people voted for Barack Hussein Obama, not because of his character, because they knew he was a baby killer. They knew it. They knew he believed in infanticide. They knew it before they voted for him. They knew he was a Muslim before they were Christians, darling wearers, tongue talkers, talking in tongues. They knew he was a Muslim. They know that Muslims and, and Islam stands over against Jesus. The man has a Muslim name. We're not talking about Mahalia Jackson's son. We're not talking about Dr. King's, Coretta Scott King's son. We're not talking about Shirley Chisholm's son. We're not talking about Nancy Wilson's son. We voted for him anyway because he was black. He's black for us to matter. And we black races have got to stick together. Church mother said to me, because they weren't judging by the character. They were judging because they are racist black people. They are racist. Black, the black presses before God is like the lie before God. You can't tell the difference between Satan's use of a lie on humanity than Satan's use of black racism on humanity. They're both the same. God sent me here to preach this morning. And I'm going to preach it. Black people receive 95% or if a black society had a GDP, a gross domestic product, whereby they evaluate mathematically, systematically, where all of their income flowed from and all of its derivatives that flowed into the life of black people, you would discover that 95% of the income that flows into black people comes from racism. Affirmative action, food stamps, the great society, laws, equal equality laws, all racism. You can say they're good for humanity if you want, but it's racism is what it is. Bus drivers. Racism. These jobs that black people do are given to them because, you remember, Rosa Parks not only could not drive a bus, but she couldn't ride in front of the bus. So a little racism has gotten black people bus driver jobs. Post office. Go in the post office. You think you'd fall into a tar pit so black in there. Racism. Racism. And racism not only as a result of how they got the jobs, but racism meaning that's all they qualify to do. They don't have engineering skills. They don't have technical skills. They don't have administrative ability skills. So they have to get a job with security where they all they have to do primarily is just kind of show up and keep breathing and they can get a paycheck. Racism. Racism because they don't have the potential to compete with Japanese in technology. They don't have the potential to compete in other what? Places. Racism! Where they get their money from. School teachers, same thing. Police officers, same thing. Government workers, same thing. And then all these people get Section 8 housing. Racism again. 95 percent of the gross domestic product that flows into the life of every black person you know comes as a result. In other words, black people without racism would be dirt poor. If they didn't have racism, they wouldn't have any money. That's how they get their money. Racism is a money tree. Don't you see how rich Al Sharpton is? Don't you see how rich Jesse Jackson is? He's a racist leader. That's where black people get their money from, racism. Without it, they'd have no money, no skills. But black people have not always been racist. They haven't. The era of the civil rights, when we can mark that period from 1954, if we like, until present, 
if you want to call that, and that is an era, it is a period where racism was birthed, it has grown, it has seized. It is now Satan's great, one of Satan's greatest weapons in the earth today, black people. They are racist. But the Reconstruction period, my friends, was a time when blacks built, we're talking about from 1965, 1865 rather, up until the industrial age and even through that period when Jim Crow started in the 1920s. But from 1865 to 1920s, black people built banks, they became prosperous, they became millionaires. We had more millionaires right after slavery than we do now. Oprah Winfrey and Robert Johnson, all that crowd of liars and racist thieves, are nothing compared to the number of black millionaires who, and even to this very day, there are still black people from East Texas to Maryland, right up to Pennsylvania, who still own land from slavery. They can trace it all the way back to the time of Reconstruction. They didn't get the 40 acres of the mule, but through their own abilities, after watching the master, they own hundreds, if not thousands, of acres of land, and little by little, little down, but they pass that land on to their children and their grandchildren, and they're living on it today. That's Reconstruction. That wasn't civil rights. Before racism, before racism, before civil rights. And they own that land even until today. Businesses. When I first came to this community, everywhere you looked, there was a black business. Everywhere you looked, there was a black store. There's one right up the street up here. All the businesses were owned by black people. When I first came to Harlem, there was a black community. Out of Reconstruction, out of Jim Crow, here comes civil rights and racism, and black people said, we don't have to be store owners anymore. We can be racist and shake down the government. And our shake down artist is Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and the NAACP. We don't have to own business anymore. We don't have to own stores anymore. We don't even have to go to church anymore. We can be racist. Racist. <laughs> you work with black people now? Try to hire them, right? Give them a job. You're white. First time you tell them, listen, pick this up. You get up. You're racist. I'm going to tell Jesse Jackson. I'm going to tell Al Shopper. And he's going to march on you. Racism. If you know a black person today, he's a racist. Not just a part-time one. Not just a semi-one. Not one when they're away from the church. He's a racist going through. If you know if he's black, he's racist. From 1970 until where we are now in 2013. We have, and I'm going to round off numbers, and you can go to Census Bureau and get your own data if you like. We have a million black men in prison right now, as I speak, one million. And of the million black men we have in prison, they have an average or medium sentence of 10 years. That's right now. That's as this moment. So when you consider did civil rights, have we been advanced by Jesse Jackson, who was the high priest and leader, and Al Sharpton, are we better off now than we were 70 years ago if we consider prison demographics where back in the 1920s we had maybe 5,000 men nationwide black in prison, and that would have been a lot, where now we got a million. And each one of those million men we have in prison have a minimum of a 10-year sentence. So when you do the aggregate and you look at what has been handed down through civil rights, through the leadership of Jesse Jackson, through the leadership of people that y'all praise, through the leadership of people that have made y'all hardcore racists and supporters of Satan, we have 10 million years of prison sentences handed out to black America. 10 million years. How are you going to serve all that time? That's just now. We have to start the process back in the 1970s. So if we go back all the way to 1970 and we come up to now, where we've had nearly 3 million men in prison, or 5 million, pardon me, in the system with the same amount of time period of 10 million, then you've got 50 million years of prison sentences on the books. They sent us this Castro, Ariel Castro, out there in Cleveland to a, a thousand years. Did I hear about that last week? A thousand years. Everybody just jumped out. Well, we got him a thousand years. The judge sentenced him that. But under your favorite leaders, 
under your mindset, under your racism from 1970 until present, if you're talking about an advancement, if you're talking about us being a better people, judges have handed out 50 million years of prison sentences to the black man. Where from 1970 all the way back to 1865, there were barely 10,000 years handed out. Are we better off? Young black people don't like me, right? On my Facebook page, YouTube, he's Uncle Tom. Man, that don't like black people. From 1970, starting in the 1980s, until present, black men who stopped going to Howard and Hampton and Fisk and Shaw and, 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 and every, who stopped that realized that we can make money, not the way Chuck Berry is saying about Maybelline, why can't you be true? Oh, Maybelline, why can't you be true? You just started back doing those things you used to do. Now the most popular black artists have made millions of dollars calling the black woman a bitch, a hoe, a hoochie mama, and spitting at them, and the black women are just pulling off their panties and throwing them to the stage. Call me a hoe, call me a bitch, call me a hoe, and they're making millions of dollars. You're talking about a deprived, a state of being. And not only that, hip, hip hop music, it may have a little beat to it that you can get into your jungle activity. You got that jungle juice in you, so do do do. But it's basically born in violence, killing, often people, killing this and killing that. It was boring, killing each other, East Coast, West Coast, gang supported. And yet you call that music? You call that progress? You see how racist and what civil rights has done to your morality and integrity? Ain't no way you could have stood up and called a black woman a bitch back in the name. It could call her a hoe and get paid. I mean, you get paid calling young black women hoes and hoochie mamas. You see how deprived you are? And you say you don't like me? You see what God thinks about you and yours? If you're black, you support it. You listen to that hip hop music in your house. Your children listen to it. You bought it for them. You listen to the hoes and the bitches. And the hoochie mamas. And yet you don't want to sing the Davis sisters. <laughs> Racism. God is saying now he's calling for the destruction of Jesse Jackson, Al Shop, Mark Mariel, Oprah Winfrey, and all that crowd of racists and nothing but pure, cold-blooded racists. And they're in the hands of Satan, tantamount to the lie that Satan uses as well. And I'm here to preach it. God Almighty belongs to glory. Now let me set the, the temperature here. The Bible says that God said to Saul, all right, you want to be my king. God never wanted a king over the people of Israel. He never wanted a king. But the people said, we want a king. We want Obama. God says, but I'm your king. And Samuel is my prophet. We want a king like all the other people have. We want a king. We want a black president. The way everybody else has got it. And God says, all right. So he gave him Saul. And then he said, all right, now Saul here, I want you to do something. The Amalekites, 700 years ago, when my children were coming across Transjordan from Egypt and the Red Sea to Jordan, and all they had was pots and pans and their children, their sheep, their tents. They had no defense mechanism. They had no water to drink. They had no food to eat. They had no mechanized army. And Amalek was there in the valley. And he saw them coming. And he purposed in his heart to destroy every last one of them, to kill them all, the children. 700 years ago, he, he, did, he purposed to kill my people. And God says, I haven't forgotten about it. I have not forgotten about it. But what I want you to do is I want you to go and get revenge for me. I want you to kill every that which uh, the Amalekites plan to do to my children. I want you to do to them. And he told Saul to go do it and accomplish it. I want to refer to this scripture here where Samuel said, bring me a gang. Bring him here. Bring him here. Bring him here. 
Samuel took the sword, and the Bible says he cut King Agag into pieces. And that was the end of, that was the completion of the command that God had given to Saul. Now in a few moments, you're going to hear me say that God's calling for the annihilation and utter destruction of all the race baiters, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and every other person who supports racism and leadership. God Almighty is calling for the destruction of them the way he called for the destruction of King Agag. And so if we're going to end racism, we need to annihilate black people, or at the very least, their black leaders. The only way you're going to end it. You're not going to end it with the Great Society orchestrated by President Johnson or marching on Washington as did Dr. Martin Luther King who admonished black people to judge people by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. You're not going to admonish it that way. Dr. King couldn't do it. If all the others who worked so feverishly to do it can't do it. The only way you are going to get rid of this weapon that's as deadly as a lie who are black races is that you've got to annihilate the leadership thereof. That way you'll put away racism out of the hearts of people. Are we ready? Now, when the Lord calls for the destruction of Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, to be destroyed with the edge of the sword, are we ready to do it? Are we ready? Are we ready to do it? And do you believe that God would call for it? Forget about being ready, whether you believe it or not. 